Yeah, no, no, get in here, man. Get in the scene, man. Get famous. Be famous, man. He's a true artist, freak, a San Francisco. You know, when I think of Mr. Skateboarding, a pair comes to mind right away. Loves skateboarding. This guy has been where no man has gone before, and he loves it. Front side lay back, front side rock. Usually, I I talk to myself. Everybody talks to himself. I'm a, I'm gonna interview myself. What's this guy's gonna throw at you? Blah 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 blah. Oh, this is where I was raised. I was uh, I was born in uh, San Francisco General Hospital, and a couple foster homes here. I've been here for a long time. Look, look, look. Look, look at these guys. Oh, see, they get stuck on purpose, man. They know I'm here. Yes. Look, guys. It's garbage material. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you put it all in at the same time. Alive. Land's in. That's where uh, action's at, usually. This is my fishing hole out here, and my surf hole. Go, 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 there you go. Wow, he's on that. Yeehaw! First time I ever met Pierre was the summer of 1981 at Rainbow Skates. He wanted to get this GNS Doug Saladino skateboard because I had a, a 6.3 Impala lowrider on it. Like, who the fuck is this guy? Once he set up that board, he was an instant fixture of the skate shop and then on into the fucking punk rock and hardcore scene of SF. Uh, just to try something new and sort of uh, get out of the the gang violence. I used to be in gangs in uh, San Jose. Since I started skating, it was all, it was all, I had to stick with it. He just like transformed his life from the gangs and just became either his true self or someone else, which included skateboarding and punk rock. And I think San Jose was the best punk scene ever. Without the uh, skate scene, there would be no punk scene. <laughs> Gavin Corey, Super Cavalero, Bob Smelzer, Rick Blackheart. I think I'm the first one in the pit punk scene. San Jose, San Jose brought a lot of memories when I go to hang out with Bob Smelzer from Circle A. Oh, yeah. Dude, I even forgot the fuck I, first time I met you. I it's forgot. Been too long. Man, it's like, no, I'm not brain dead, but. No, I know. Yeah, it's just like. I am A. I should have known you about, what, 40 years? Has to be. When you were a freestyle pro. Okay. I think LA was the first uh, punk scene ever from uh, Dogtown Boys, uh, Z Boys. I know Jim Muir and uh, Mike Muir from, Su Mike Muir from uh, Suicidal Tennessee. My favorite music right now, Faction, Clay Wheels, Ray Stevens, wow. Mofo uh, Drunk Engines, Descendants, I got to see Descendants tattoo on both sides of my neck. Brian Brennan, the singer of JFA. That's one of the best bands. Ooh. Team Pierre. He was just a fixture at all the shows, you know, at the map, farm, on Broadway. He was everywhere, skating everywhere. Independent, like, fishing hat on, and he would stand out front, with, you know, in Bomb Hills. If you remember how on Broadway was, it's full of fucking traffic, and there, it was a, near a police station, and the only ways to get off of it, off of that street, 
if you were off of Broadway, if you were being chased by the cops, were either up the hill by Finocchio's, which is impossible, it means you're taking your board and running, or down the hill by the, what, what's now the Hustler Club, and that's, a, that's hairy, man. <laughs> and so to be riding down the middle of the street with no fear is something. Yeah, the farm was the shit, man. All right. Ooh. Yeah, the wow. farm was awesome. And then we'd see, you know, Pierre would be there and hanging out and yeah. all that. Well, I always thought the farm was a cool name, not realizing that it was an actual farm. Like in the basement, there was animals down there, dude. Like cows and horses and chickens and shit, you know? The, the dollar beers out of the garbage can. And it was a fucking free for all. It was cool shit, man. I'd sit outside and drink and then go in and people would be like, this fucking park is a gang park. What are you guys doing out here? But back then there was no skate park. And basically what it was is like punk rockers, skinheads, skaters, jocks, I think were hanging out there. Like everybody was there. But I think the best show I've ever seen there was Bad Brains. And that Bad Brains show, I remember DRI played before the Bad Brains. And it was fucking skinhead nut house, right? Like during that, like they did the wall of death where they all like stood at the stage and then turned around and just charged the crowd and it was all skinheads. It was crazy. But then when the Bad Brains played, a couple songs thrashing. And next thing you know, bam, reggae. Everybody calm down. Incredible. For people who don't know, our Potrero uh, skate park is the park behind the farm. Yeah. What a kook. Look at this guy. Holy shit. God damn. Really? Wow. That's been a long time, Pete. We're at the farm. At the farm in San Francisco, down at the end of Potrero Avenue, I actually held an event here. Um, uh, a skate rock, uh, drunk engines, beyond possession, septic death. I mean, the place was packed. Now the people who put this thing on, Thrasher Magazine, they are cool people, right? Now they put out a record called Skate Rock Volume 3 so that they could show all different kinds of bands. We put a song on there called Burial. All about these bands that had skateboarding at their core. Great punk shows went down. But yeah, the farm was like a, an institution. I remember one time when I was playing, somebody threw a can of beer at my head and I ducked and missed it, uh, and it missed. And then, but I could see who threw it, so I jumped off the stage in the middle of the song, ran over and punched the guy. And we'll sneak in and we'll have to dodge a, a, a goat or a chicken. <laughs> no, it was rad. This is our- Well, I lived up the street, so. Oh yeah, you got I, this place dialed. Yeah, so I just didn't show up until later. <laughs> I just walked in the front door. They had a big back. I climbed the fence once yeah. and and there, it was electrified, right? I grabbed the wire and I fell <laughs> I was like, it didn't have any signs. I was like, is that, I was like, oh. It was so far removed from like the other clubs and the other parts of the city where people were walking around. It always felt to a certain extent dangerous, right? The farm is here and it's by the freeway, um, the freeway area there. And uh, across the way, Coors Brewing, Coors. Uh, like distributing plant, plant, right? So we would go over there and grab kegs of beer out of there and go in the, Go into the, go into the park with a screwdriver and just sit there. Yeah, because we didn't have a tap. Yeah, right. We didn't have a tap, yeah, so we just, just opened it up. Yeah, we would just take the beer, and then everybody had their cup with a screwdriver, trying to open the beer can. <laughs> Me and Archimedes did that a couple of times. There was a lot of memories in the farm. Oh no, the people that were running the farm shows, they knew what they were doing. Verbal abuse, I was raised with those guys on Broadway. 
Very good. Really big scene. On Broadway was famous. And Buhe uh, Bu uh, Gardens. Hey, how you doing? Mubuhe, right here. Tear, uh, I was a doorman one time too. I got in a fight with three skinheads. I was in favor. But that used to be the door, back door there too. We used to sneak in. The verbal abuse, drunk engines, and the boneless ones. <laughs> it was like, but I was like 15 years old and it was on Broadway and I couldn't get into the show. So Max Fox was like, just carry in an amp and come on in. And, and, and Pierre's like, yeah, come on. And so we all ran in the, in the back, there's a back alley to the, to the on Broadway. And we, I carried this amp in there and I was like 15 and I was like, you know, like, uh oh, can I get in there? And then we went up these metal stairs in the back, get in there and I'm like, I'm in, I'm in. And then that was so awesome. Oh, Dirksons. Oh, that's, that's new. <laughs> the bats. The bats. The bats were rad. The, the bats were the old Ham's Brewery. People would, would convert these large vats, these large cylinders that used to contain beer. They would uh, live in them or use them as rehearsal space. Then you'll see the big giant tub when they have the beer. But uh, it was like, whoa. And you got, everybody's got their little spots. So I got into many a party there, man. It was creepy, creepy as fuck. Smelled like beer. It was 82 or 83. And, you know, everybody was rehearsing. They had all broken out the inner walls. So you could scramble from top to bottom like a rat, like between these walls. So you would hear the music of different bands coming up and there were no windows. So you had no you sense had of no time. Sense and of time. course, crystal, course, method, crystal you know, meth, you know. If you don't have a sense of time and you take a bunch of crystal meth, that, that was a scene that was just never gonna stop. You know, just people walking around like zombies. You know, I, I don't really know what was going on there. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't even wanna know. The punk scene in the 1980s in San Francisco, it was awesome. Uh, it was really free form, it was wide open, it was, it was like the entire city of San Francisco was like this free punk rock amusement park and, um, you know, it didn't know it. You walk in, MDC lived there, uh, verbal abuse, a lot of punk bands because they, they really had money in them days. Nobody had money. Maybe a job here and there, but... Yeah, we're all poor. But in them days, we're, you know, 50 cents here, 50 cents... Oh, $7? I can get that in, what, hour? Next thing you know, I'm in, I'm in the show. Two, we're at a show, and I remember we are skanking around, and all of a sudden, as we're skanking around to Whipping Boy, or one of Whipping the bands, <laughs> dude jumps off stage, starts skanking around in the pit with us as well. And everybody got hurt. Like the guy was so gnarly. He was doing backflips in fucking boots with spike bracelets on You're back right. flips. The and gauntlet. The, yeah, exactly. And the backflips are coming on top of people. So slowly but surely, everybody like one at a time is like, fuck this, I'm yeah. out. Right? That, and all, we're all sitting in the chairs watching the show, not wanting to skank. Well, fucking Eugene, I think is the name. Dude, that thing He's out there skanking around by himself. That thing and all of a sudden, you come running in. It's the first time I've seen you. On the backs of the chair backs. You're running on top of the chair backs. You got knee pads on, some blue rectors with yellow straps flapping. You got your skateboard in your hand, and you literally dove into the pit like this and took everybody the fuck out. And that put Eugene down, and then all the skaters got back up and started skanking around, having a good time again. It was fucking epic. So as a singer, I was trying to like liven things up. And when Pierre came down and like we started rolling, people were like, oh, he's not going to beat us up if we liven up, and we can liven up, and Pierre's a skater, and he livened things up. I got a sense that he, he became uh, a larger-than-life personality to a lot of other people, especially where I was at a location. Go, oh, there's Pierre, man. I heard some weird things about that guy. I'm like, well, I've seen some weird things. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Mad love, mad love, mad respect. I mean, part of my my growing up in the skateboarding, there's Pierre. We were by you tried as fast to skate and somehow you made it in there. Mascot, <laughs> custodial engineer, 
uh, sideshow. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Especially the red crabs. Oh, look at this. Yeah! Oh. Oh, cool. You wonder what he he knows and what he's done in the city that you know most people have never never know about. Like I bet he knows like all the ins and outs of this city that people would be blown away by if he would just like sat down and told you a list of things for like an hour. He knows the bus route system. He knows yeah, where yeah. the fish are, all that shit. Like he knows this entire city. Like, and he's traveled it constantly. One last car. <laughs> I got she in the neighborhood soon. Yeah. Pierre was just like part of the landscape, and the more I got to know about him, the the more interesting he seemed to be. You know. Man, a few words, but the, each word was chosen wisely, and it was, it made you sit back and wonder, like, what runs through this guy's mind all day, every day? You know? Where'd you get that at? I'm gonna get one. Wow, that's a tough one. Um, <laughs> the attitude of the people. People have got to clean up and uh, take care of their city, of course. I like to help people out. Uh, make it a, a friendlier place. Bartering, trading, human level, where it's not all about the money. Two, if he were actually to run for mayor and what the city badly needs is something to, to reinvigorate its relationship to arts and culture. As far as I know, he's never paid attention to anything else. He'd be good for that. There'd be like fucking hot dog stands everywhere. Bait and tackle or fishing shop, like every block. He'd get all cars off the road. He put a cross guard on a crossing guard on every corner. He sees cars driving by. Cars need to slow down. This morning he's like, "Get off the phone!" For a guy who's never driven, like, he's yelling out the window at people. It's a stop sign. Actually, and they're in the wrong. Like, you did run that stop sign. Oh, One eighty over hey, there. What are you? Hey, what are you doing? What do you mean? Whoa! Uh, go ahead. Sorry about that. What I miss? Sorry, well, that lady to cross the red light. Oh, sir. I don't think he should actually be the mayor because there are some things that maybe if left up to Pierre might not be good for some of the rest of the population. On that note, he should somehow be involved with the park service looking out for the beaches. Yeah, he's like a park ranger. Yeah, and... He's a city ranger. Yeah. He's already got his camel gear going, so... Yeah, exactly. If he had a badge, he'd look official. I don't know, I think I like him unofficial. I just gotta tell you, when I got that longboard, you know, and they had that party and everything, I'm like, yeah, this is a guy that deserves the recognition and how well known people know you. And the crab man, the you know, picture and thrasher of you, you know, with the crab in your mouth, and then the crab attacking in the city. Six foot four Pierre, you know, with not a care in the world, come skateboarding down that yellow line in the middle of the street and see that and go, that's about the coolest fucking thing I've ever seen. I guess he's famous for being Chef Pierre. I was looking so, up duck neck. So he just, I mean, eating crazy shit. It was after skate sessions, uh, El Fartolito burrito shop down there on 24th and Mission, and Pierre would uh, <laughs> like chug the whole bowl of like salsa at the table, you know. You know, like when you go to Taqueria, you just eat all that shit. Ah. All the time, every time. <laughs> to where they stop putting them out. <laughs> you had to ask for it. <laughs> No, he got the, cra the crab man uh, nickname from eating them crabs, you know, fresh out the water. Well, I invented that. We needed more substance in the, uh, in the magazine. So we'd start off with writing this adventure. The, the author of scarfing material is a Vietnam vet who lives in bushes and he hates people, we go from there. 
So, and after a while, I just started making shit up. I'm like, oh man, okay, this is horrible. I don't have any, who knows what this is gonna taste like. Oh, uh, spam, baby food. Oh, I'm done. That was the recipe? Yeah, uh, spam, baby food, and a few other things. I forgot what it was. I didn't make Beans. It. Mofo beans. See? Maybe a couple a uh, couple of raw eggs. Raw eggs? Yeah. Doing mostly scuff material at Bryce's house. He had the kitchen and everything. Bryce, he had a kitchen. <laughs> and everything, like a bathroom too, right? I forgot. It just been a long time. I remember drinking bowls of hot sauce or salsa. Salsa. For um, salsa. For money. Yeah, yeah, salsa. Like that was my favorite. If you give me five bucks, I'll drink that. Yeah. Cool. Now I got five bucks. I can almost buy a beer. Rick, and one of the first times I met him up in in Rosa Skate Park, I think. And he's like, "What's up?" Right? Meets everyone, and I I had this jar of. Um, barbecue sauce that I think my dad made like this secret barbecue sauce and the guy grabs it and just scalded it he drank it and we fucking looked at him and I fucking started tried to punch him but he was like six foot something tall and man I hated him at the point but uh but then you know you learn to love him and Chef Pierre <laughs> San Francisco skaters uh they kind of blended in Julian Stranger I was raised with. It was uh, John Cardell, all the Edmund guys in uh, Sacramento, the Blockhead, Sam Cunningham. But uh, Sacramento was uh, really good too. I was, I was uh, Ricky Windsor. Yeah. Really good street style, really good. But uh, in the independent book, I'm on uh, page uh, 172, right next to Ricky Windsor. Joey got me on uh, 1984, somewhere in San Jose with my my uh, tennis shoes chopped up in the front because they were too small. He got me in a big one-footed air. Because I love this photo because this is his ramp. But this is our skate parks in the 80s. <laughs> and Pierre's, you know, obviously ripping it up right there, which is awesome. Pierre, how you doing, man? You show up with fucking... <laughs> You know, he's got a fucking crazy beavis and butthead tattoos and shit. And it's like fucking rad, you know, and he would show his tats off and shit. You know. When he first got Descendants tattoo on one side of his neck, I was like, wow. Yeah. Okay, that's, you really like the Descendants. And then a week later, he comes in with the other, like the back of his head on the other side of his neck. And just like. Oh, right, right. Uh, it's actually perfect, dude. <laughs> his Milo tats, yeah. He's a fucking rad dude, you know, it's a trip. Iron Maiden on my hand. Oh, John Cardiel here. That's one of my, my heroes right there. He's doing a lot of DJ a lot, mostly a lot of reggae. Yeah, where are we going? Uh, let's go by Ocean Beach. Yeah, that sounds rad. <laughs> I want to be a lift driver. <laughs> this place has got a lot of history out here, man. A lot of fucking history. Man. Is, that, is that why you like it so much? Yeah, I like it out here because it reminds me of my. Before I go to work, Deluxe, I go here and hit the arcade up. Way back in 84. And eight foot right in a slope. Right down here. Okay, Dave Quim, Quim was uh, fishing one time. A little bit more water than this. And in fact, I was out here, about a hundred yards out. So I got sucked out in this area right here. And I climbed down right up here, this rock here, and they rescued me. Yeah, it's good to be alive. It's that bird. Where else do you like to skate? Street, 
Uh, mostly DMV in the weekends. Whatever I can get to, man, I'll skate. Wallenberg's fun. Hunter's Point, um, guy named Sam Finger, younger guy, used to own a ramp there in the backyard. And his uh, dad built an old house all falling apart. So I used to sleep in there and inside once in a while, if it's nice and warm, I'm sleeping underneath the tombstone. A couple bong hits here and there, listen to some Debo or whatever, learn how to drop in. I was a flat bottom rep. Coco was uh, teaching me how to drop in. And um, I'm standing on the deck and this guy comes out of the, um, the extension, the tombstone, and totally freaked me out. And I was like, oh, I was like, what's up? And he was, I thought we were busted, like we couldn't skate here or something. And then it was Pierre and he's like, hey, how's it going? And uh, I just kind of froze there and Coco was like, what's up, Pierre? And that's when I knew Pierre was cool, you know, he skated. Can we skate here? And he's like, yeah, of course, skate here. And then that was like the first time I met Pierre and I was like, oh, it was amazing. And then after that, it was just like uphill from there. Yeah. And then uh, I was in the tombstone. Yeah, right. Living in the ramp. Yeah. Hey, I was homeless for a while, so I had a board bag and I used to sleep in it. Wake up early in the morning, do fakies for a couple of hours. And Even like wheat burying heads, we would just skate the streets, man. You know, leave P2's house up on Highland, bomb down Mission and hit every curb and wall ride, whatever there was, 24th and Mission Banks. Definitely China Banks, we hit a Safeway curb, bomb in 9th Ave, backside 9th. <laughs> How can you forget the dish? The dish was the, the funnest piece of shit. It's and crazy. And bottles everywhere and shit. For SF, that, that, was our, that was our skate park for many years. The dish was all right after the shows. We'd get a bu bunch of beers and nice. go up there after the show and skate till 2 and till 9 in the morning. <laughs> we had a contest there a long time ago. It was called Day of Hill. I like that Ollie layback. I got that from uh, Kevin Moore, early issue of Thrasher, 1981. Not many people did that one. Hey, get out of here. What up, Pete Dox? Special here. guest appearance. All right, Holmes. How you doing, bro? All right, all right. What's it. happening, man? Just answer a couple questions. Yeah, about about Pyre, the yeah. dish. Oh yeah, it's all torn apart now. Yeah. Did you see it? I have not seen it but these guys they dropped off a chunk of it in my mailbox oh yeah yeah so i do have a piece of the dish all right bro good yeah, seeing you man yeah all these bloods are going crazy on us no we got hurt we just got a couple people got beat up with sticks. When it was over, we were skating after the contest, and I think it was eight, I was 15, and we we're skating there, and all of a sudden, people were throwing bottles into the dish and all this stuff, and we just bombed down the hill. You had all these young And there bloods. was like, literally like 30 people bombing the hill, because they were just throwing bottles at us and all kinds of stuff. Young like, bloods were yeah, crazy. Yeah, they were getting crazy. after us. I was there. Mostly, we're doing the street. Oh wait, hold it! Uh, there's Sunnyvale underneath the freeway. That was our that was our main uh, spot right there. If we had nowhere to go, it was uh, the wave. It used to roll in, bring a couple of railroad tracks, more slide that. Yeah, but the wave was uh, really huge. Just skate that a long time ago, right next to uh, Del Monte. Cap story. Oh man, he's my hero, man. I skated his ramp a few times. Yeah, he's a, he's a man. He's he's just it just makes you want to cry. He's so smooth, man. He skates really good, man. Cappy was one of my favorite skaters of them all. 
Cabby, John Cody. It was a 1984, uh, I was uh, 24 years old. Matter of fact, I'm in, the, in, in, in a video. That's where the Dead Kennedys were played. I was I was on stage and uh, just messing around, thrashing, and trying to tackle uh, Jello Free Opera. I remember that one. He kicked him in the head one show. But it was not revenge, it was just all the punk saying. Being Pierre was Job number one. Right? This is the muck truck special. Chef boy, I'm hungry. He's an artist at life. I'd like to see him sing uh, I Left My Heart in San Francisco with Lady Gaga. Me and Archimedes are the first ones one day. I just got done drinking a 40. I mean, we went down there all the time because, you know, that's when street skating started. It started in the EMB, you know, with Tommy Guerrero and, and, and Mark Gonzalez. So we went to the Barcadero and check out some lines. We're the first ones. Which I kind of bummed about, but I'm not going to cry about it. But, uh, you know, we'd skate in Barcadero. Pierre would come in from the, uh, the wave side of the stage. And there's this little area that kind of started low to high. And he would just push and grind off the end, run up the C block, and then jump back on his board, do a Pierre on the garbage can. Yeah. I don't even know how he got into that position. But he used to just do that and then spin the board around and then roll back in. Boom. Did a couple lines here and say, hey man, this must be cool. I had the car and I was doing my little street plant. Yeah, that was like, okay, oh, hang on, man. Pierre's gonna skate. I don't care what he did, but it was like, ah, here comes the tricky part. And then he does his big move. I could watch pro skaters do whatever airs and that's all gnarly, but to see Pierre going and do his signature move, that was always a treat. I mean, you do his pizza makers and all those cool tricks and stuff. It was pretty awesome. There we go. You know, every day I used to do it in um, Parcadero. Sometimes I didn't make it. It was like, wait, something like, sometimes like that little. Yeah. Like that. Whoa. And I roll backwards and I plant my feet That's to right. my board. Shit. I can picture you doing it now. But look, it's got to be a little bit wider, right? So my body can. The pizza maker, that was one of the greatest fucking tricks that Pierre invented, you know, like those of you who don't know the, the pizza maker, how back in the old days when they spin dough and throw the dough around and punch him and spin him, that's what he do. It throws board up there, catch it, spin it, punch it, the pizza maker. I think I coined that term, you know? Skating down from Chinatown and buying like a bag of roasted duck necks. He would sit on the block and just gnaw on these duck necks and just throw them on the bricks and people would fall on them like pebbles. People were around I'm like, I don't care, I'm skating. So I did, so I made it and people were like, wow. I just skated on and maybe a wall ride. San Francisco lends itself to wall rides and that whole kind of like Can't there was a lot of stuff to skate here but it wasn't you know you had to be creative and my carl used to hang out there all the time pretty cool mark gonzalez he was out there busting some gonzas <laughs> Hey, thanks, Steve. Thanks, John Curdiel. Love you. There's always a return. Steve, I'm going to have some footage soon. Vans, number one. Sure, I mean, he gets uh, more gear than any name brand sponsor damn. I mean, that says a lot, man. I mean, personality goes a long way.
Like, you know, we got stuff from Powell, you know, but also from like Tommy and Jim or, you know, go to FTC. Truly, everybody. Actually, Air took, Swenson. Took care of everybody up here. Pyre. The P double, triple EMD. Yeah, this way. I used to be scary going through here, but I'm over it, man. It's not that bad. Oh, wow, that's cool. Hey, come over, come up here. I never seen that before. That's cool. I like that. <laughs> that's fucking cool, man. So I'm using a uh, ounce and a half, two ounce hair razors. This is my favorite spot right here when the water is up. Oh, striper. Ocean Beach. 16 pounds, about 37 inches. Pierre Grills. All right, come on, goddammit, striper. He's, a, he's feral, sure. So he's just doing his thing, you know, his natural habitat, just uh, eating uh, what's available. Look at the cheek on him, man. He's like an urban survivor, right? Oh no, I'm in trouble, Pete. He's gonna start eating yuppies soon. It's gonna be great. <laughs> yes, eat them all, please, Pierre. Yeah, I mean, he could be out there foraging in Golden Gate Park, you know. Mm, I'm, tasty. I see him looking at those bison like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get me one of them one day. Matter of fact, this is the first time in 15 years I've been here. I've been here one time, but it's, you know, it's kind of scary. Oh yeah, look at that. Wow. Actually, somebody fell off here a couple weeks ago. Some tourists. Woohoo! I will do a personal my, my portfolio. Artwork, man. Yeah? Carving now. You see that shit? It's carving wood. Pretty amazing. Check it out. See? Wham. Wham. Shape. Wow. 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 This is it. <laughs> I take the screwdriver and jab it with the with the uh, screw and pound it, make a hole. So I'm creating something so I can cut it with. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Dude, that ain't. That's perfect. It's small, but it's it's good. I should check out the ring in the world. You know, I've always wanted to ask you, dude. So, like, how long did it take you to skate from San Francisco to San Jose? Three, Three and a half hours. Dang, dude. Is this El Camino? Every hour I get 12.5 miles. Skating down from San Francisco all the way on El Camino to San Jose to see the faction. <laughs> this guy's gnarly. You know, his his skate trips to Santa Cruz, like... Motherfucker skated from here to Santa Cruz down Highway 1. Because that's pretty fucking crazy, skating to Santa Cruz. To surf. Everywhere I went for a while there, there was Pierre. How he got there, I don't know. I took a plane. He said he skated. <laughs> so they just have this image of Pierre skating down the coast of California. How'd you get here? And he skated. Mind blown. I'm like, I just couldn't concentrate on everything that I was doing because I kept thinking about him pushing down. Where'd you sleep? Showed me the skateboard. Of course. And so I'm like seeing all these people that I see in San Francisco, but you got the monster of them all. This guy, who's so dedicated to skating. Did you skate to Sacramento? No, that's too far. 
Yeah, but San Diego, that's fine. <laughs> and it's so funny, like the young skaters and all the new generation, he just cruises around on his bike. He doesn't skate around. And they don't know who that guy is. You know, how important that guy was, you know? And he is. He's still alive. Cheers to you, Buzz. Just keep it at real. Just still alive. <laughs> no, they left me when I was six years old. Matter of fact, all these guys, all, all these skater guys are in my family. I think a uh, part Indian, American Indian. Look, I uh, was 16, I was in Nelpitas, one of my foster homes. Got to fly my parents one of these days, and after for a couple of years, just kind of faded away. Make a lot of friends. Friends help. If you need advice, ask uh, other people that know. Stay out of trouble, keep skating, stay in school, do your homework, stay away from gangs, they're not your friends. Just keep skating, enjoy what you're doing. Double pump with a flip. Out. That's Pierre. Go, 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 get it, get it. Aw, oh, man. You're fucking long live Pierre. Oh, yeah. Go, go, go. There you go. Wow, ah, he's on that. Yeehaw. Hey, Pete, how you doing? Boy, those wheels are blazing. That's why they're called Speedies. <laughs> we need to get together next week and do some footy. Give me a call. Bring us, Kiki. Wait. <laughs>